So, we're back. <clears throat> um, sorry, just eating some almonds. It's about noon, and I haven't eaten anything yet. Well, welcome back. Brand new 22 badass year. It better be a lot better than the last couple of years. Jesus. Anyway, back to the episode at hand. What we're going to be kind of discussing today in some detail is uh, new parts. It's been a little while since I've uh, shown a video and part of that is you know it was you know the holiday season and happy holidays to everybody all my loved ones and all my new friends and old friends alike um, and uh, new visitors welcome if this is your first time visiting. So I stopped because I was intent on uh, getting some parts. Parts that I thought would be advantageous for really moving forward in a solid way on this on this build. So put, put down my nuts, I dropped my nuts. Oftentimes, uh, perfection is the enemy, is the mortal enemy of progress, and that is uh, especially so in my case, uh, and I'm sure a lot of us out there can uh, identify with that. Um, when I first conceived of this project, way back in 2004, 2005, whenever it was, uh, it was my idea to uh, create like a true hybrid motorcycle, a hybrid of the FZR400 and the TDM850 and, and craft them all together into something extraordinary by taking the strengths of both and eliminating the inherent weaknesses of both. Uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, we're back here in uh, 2022, and I feel that it's more important to possibly uh, compromise, since I've already started doing that along this uh, this journey here. Um, when I uh, modify motorcycles, I typically like to, um, I don't like to radically change things occasionally. Occasionally I do. But I like to sort of give sort of like an incremental bump up in the performance of the bike. In sort of the 70s uh, motorcycles that I've built, I've put on like, you know, parts from like the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, you know, where there's been technological advancements in suspension. And and you know, using larger diameter uh, forks and correspondingly triple clamps uh, to give a bit more rigidity and strength to the front end and, you know, operating the brake uh, components along with all that. Um, you know, I'm not, like, swapping out, you know, the engines except in certain situations. But, you know, I'm just uh, trying to dynamically make uh, the motorcycles and cars, whatever, uh, just more enjoyable uh, at and, and being able to explore the limits of, of the power plants uh, that were created then uh, without having uh, any inhibitions uh, with respect to, you know, uh, tire choice or suspension, uh, you know, ability or, you know, flexing or brake uh, weakness, you know. <laughs> I mean, the first, uh, one of the first motorcycles I built was, I rebuilt was an old Honda a uh, CL77 Scrambler, which I kind of made as sort of a cafe racer thing. And it had, uh, God, these ancient uh, drum brakes on it. And the person that I sold it to, um, I, I actually rode it down to this guy's shop. And it freaking terrified me because it would not, there was like no braking. And I was like, how did they deal with this? Back in the 70s. Well, I mean, I, 
I, I probably could have like serviced the brakes better, but still they were incredibly ineffective. Uh, so that's kind of what's kind of motivated me to, to do, to, to, you know, evolve things. Anyway, I'm making a long winded explanation and let's just get to it. So I'll open up another little pink LaCroix. I'm, I'm hooked on this stuff. Not just the pink ones, but all of them, but this is berry. So, in this instance, I, uh, the FZR 400 stock had 38 millimeter fork tubes, uh, seven, you know, triple clamps or whatever. Uh, the TDM 850 had 41 millimeter fork legs, you know, set in its triple clamp. And that's so why I thought, hey, let's, let's move up from 38 to 41. That will provide a corresponding stiffness. Um, the forks had, uh, uh, they were adjustable for uh, preload and rebound dampening, not compression dampening. And, but they, you know, they were considerably longer. It was a long travel suspension. It had like at least five inches of travel, uh, which, you know, I was like, you know, I don't need that much. I can remove, uh, some of that. And, uh, and then finally, as I was kind of going through all that, I was like, well, you know what? I was reading about suspensions and the YZF 600, which was an evolution from the FZR 600, uh, had 41 millimeter fork tubes, but it had a rebound adjustment, compression dampening, and it was actually designed and engineered from a get-go for a sport bike. So I got a set of those fork legs and mounted them in the TDM 850 uh, triple clamps, which, you know, they fit absolutely perfect. And... So I was going with that, but then I was like, I saw a parts bike just recently, <laughs> which I picked up uh, for super cheap, uh, and it had uh, the YZF 600 triple clamp. So I was like, well, let's just uh, compare those. And so that's what we have here today. And I was wondering if it would uh, give any advantages. and. Uh, I think it, it probably will. It, it, it probably is worth uh, moving. Okay, these were the TDM 850 triple clamps uh, where they had uh, these uh, these mounts for sort of like, you know, a, uh, a, a handle bar that mounted on them instead of the clip-ons that mounted the, the forks, uh, the fork legs. So, uh, yeah, I was using this for a while. I, I just recently got it all painted up all nice and silver on the bottom triple clamp. And, uh, and you can see how, uh, you know, it's got fairly heavy casting to accommodate uh, these rubber damped uh, handlebar mounts. And I thought, okay, well, let's compare that with the YZF 600. Um, it's just all aluminum uh, top mount. It is a steel bottom mount again, but it also is offset, uh, like about, what, about half inch uh, lower, so I guess that would uh, tend to make everything a little bit more stiff since it's kind of spreading that, uh, that out over a longer distance. One of the things that, honestly, that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of is when uh, manufacturers uh, decide that, hey, this is where the triple, you know, the clip-ons mount and that's it, you know. <laughs> You know, and you know, bless them. I mean, if I'm sure this has, uh, this makes it, you know, nice and rigid and there's no way once it's all bolted together that, you know, this is going to rotate on the fork leg. But it's just, it, it kind of rubs me wrong to a certain degree that they're like, well, this is how, you know, these, these handlebars are going to be mounted and this is just what we decide is best and so that's all you get. So anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, these uh, triple clamps will be a little bit lighter. Well, it's probably not. It'll be a negligible amount. Um, another thing I was curious about is uh, how they're constructed. Uh, these kind of clamp on the forward edge of the uh, uh, fork tubes, and these clamp on the back edge. And, and also these... Um, I was kind of worried about, you know, well, 
the rake and trail and everything, and you know, there's there's reasons why uh, engineers uh, either mount uh, fork tubes close together or far apart or forward or backwards and stuff like that. Um, and it turns out that uh, the YZF 600, the fork tubes are like about a quarter inch uh, closer to uh, the center bolting area of the triple clamps. And so I don't know exactly, honestly, I don't know what that means or what it does, but it actually, it buys me a little bit of room in uh, ahead of the triple clamps because I was um, going to utilize a radial mount uh, master brake cylinder for the, for the front brakes. So this might actually be much more helpful in my situation. So anyway, we're going to see how it goes. And yes, I do need to uh, swap out these bars with another or straighten this bar or we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward, um, let's uh, have another almond and talk about other components. Uh, we're going to go now and talk, well, yeah, I'm going to talk about swing arms and wheels, uh, front wheels specifically. So let's cut to that. When I was discussing earlier about how in the TDM 850, well, and also the uh, uh, Super Tenare 750, uh, it's the same thing as the previous generation of this engine, uh, Yamaha uh, rotated the gearbox up higher, uh, kind of making a stacked transmission over the uh, over the engine case. Um, one of the advantages of doing that is that uh, making a shorter powertrain uh, allows uh, manufacturers to put the engine as far forward in the chassis of the bike, um, which brings the uh, swing arm pivot uh, forward, um, which uh, then allows them to have a correspondingly longer swing arm for a same given wheelbase. Uh, and what that does, what uh, racing uh, has proven, is that uh, with a longer swing arm, you're uh, able to uh, accelerate uh, at full power out of a turn uh, with less of the uh, motorcycle's propensity to lift the bike up in a, in a wheelie, which uh, in racing is, I mean, while wheelies are cool, they are, uh, they don't allow you to controllably race a motorcycle. Uh, you want to have that uh, contact patch, front and rear, uh, you know, stuck to the, the pavement as much as possible because that is what allows you to go around corners and do everything you need to do and brake and everything like that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> one of the things about this build, which might be quite entertaining, is uh, this is an FZR 400 swing arm. Um, and the 400s, uh, one of the reasons why the FZR 400 was almost as expensive as the FZR 600 uh, back when they came out was uh, the FZR 400 used an aluminum frame, which was pretty trick. I mean, it, it's ridiculously lighter. Uh, compared to the FZR 600 steel frame, which, I mean, even that, it was a cost thing. It's much more expensive uh, to make an aluminum frame, well, back then, than it was to make a steel frame. And uh, FZR 600s also had a steel swing arm, which, uh, oof, I have right here. Now, uh, the FZR 600 uh, swing arm is an inch uh, longer overall, than the 400s, um, and I mean that's one of the great things is a lot of racers really like to have these uh, 400 swing arms if uh, if they're racing like a because you can just put this directly on an FZR 600 and 
and go racing and, and you know have a lighter uh, more responsive chassis anyway uh, so the steel swing arm that was on the TDM 850 was huge and it was uh, asymmetrically designed the the leg on the sprocket side of the swing arm uh, came out like way far uh, to accommodate the uh, sprocket and everything like that and it was it, it was at least like two or three inches longer than the FZR 400 swing arm and it was it was a it was a kind of a heavier bike it was it had a steel frame and everything and it was uh, just under 500 pounds the motorcycle and I'm as I talked before I'm trying to keep this in the low 400s if I can help it so um, yeah the FZR 400 and the FZR 600 both have the, the traditional uh, transmission uh, you know as part of the engine case down low kind of thing and so that, that kind of dictated the length of these um, when uh, Yamaha started to go with like the R6 um, they did that sort of uh, stack transmission arrangement on that engine and uh, gave it a, uh, an aluminum uh, swing arm and I think at that point an aluminum chassis too so everything was all aluminum but uh, they were able to keep a fairly compact uh, wheelbase by lengthening, you know, shrinking that, that engine case and keeping a long uh, swing arm. And this swing arm is 25 and a half inches. So it's three and a half inches longer than the FZR 400. And, um, you know, one of the things, you know, it's, it's pretty lightweight for what this is. And ordinarily, I mean, I might at some point, you know, use something like this. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of idiots seem to want to use like these kind of swing arms because they allow you to use a big fat rear tire. And that's all well and good if that is your hang up, whatever. I, at this point, I, I'm using the TDM 850 uh, rear wheel, which allows me, it's a 17 inch rear wheel versus the F0400s, which is 18 inch. And it's kind of a pain in the butt getting 18 inch rear wheels in with good rubber. Um, it's possible, but it's it's not that easy. So I'm going to utilize the FZR or the TDM 850 rear wheel. And it's, it's a little bit wider. And it allows me to go up from like you know, a 140 section rear tire up to like a 150 or 160. And that, I believe, is fine for this. The TVM 850 had a 150 section rear tire. And, you know, I don't have any big hang-ups about having fat tires. So, um, I mean, I mean, the wider rubber uh, will allow, give you a, a little bit bigger footprint uh, when going around corners and you'll get more traction absolutely but uh, uh, this bike was considered one of the best handling bikes of its time so I'm only marginally upgrading uh, things like that as we were just about to further discuss but one of the things that this might <coughs> create as far as a dynamic experience is this bike might be a little more wheelie happy and we'll see if it is too wheelie happy if it is I can put a longer swing arm or whatever on it or I can just uh, temper uh, my inputs with my wrist on the throttle anyway uh, so yeah we're we're upgrading things in evolutionary ways. Um, one of the things that the TDM850 did have uh, in front was an 18-inch front wheel. 
And so I didn't really want that. Uh, I wanted to, to keep it uh, the standard FZR 400-600 17 inch uh, front wheel. Um, and it uses the same uh, brakes as the FZR 600, these 298 millimeter discs. And so I was uh, going to use this until I picked up that YZF 600, which um, uh, the FZR 600 and the FZR 400 used a three inch front wheel. And uh, for something like that, it's kind of recommended that you use only like a, a 110 section front wheel. And that's, I'm sure that would have been absolutely fine. And I, I would have been happy to do that. But uh, with getting this YZF uh, 600, uh, it came with a uh, YZF 600 front wheel. Um, one of the advantages to that is it is a three and a half inch uh, front rim, so it allows uh, you know 120 section uh, front tire, and uh, and and of that there, there's just more uh, tires to choose from in those sizes. Uh, it also uh, moved up evolutionarily as far as the brakes. Uh, the Yamaha uh, FZR ones had a steel uh, brake disc carrier. Uh, this one, they've uh, changed it to a, an aluminum carrier, and it's a very small carrier, and the, the mounting for it is kind of more integrated into the construction of the wheel. So I think overall, this is going to be a little bit lighter wheel, and it's probably as strong or stronger since these engineers uh, seem, seemingly kind of do this these kind of changes uh, not always in absolute uh, you know pursuit of the absolute lightest possible weight because you know these bikes were not designed as race bikes uh, from the get-go yeah like they were sport bikes uh, but they were still all you know the kind of a do-all kind of motorcycle where it could be your own you know your single motorcycle the YZF 600 was considered to be you know useful as a sport tour where it was comfortable enough, uh, where it wouldn't just destroy you um, if you wanted to do a, you know, a several hundred mile day on it. This seems like this will be a, uh, a evolutionary step forward with all this. And since I'm now using uh, the YZF 600 triple clamps, clip-ons, forks, wheel, brakes, all that stuff, uh, everything is going to fit together fantastically, and it's all going to work uh, in a really good way, how Yamaha designed it to. And I'm not a Yamaha engineer. I'm not a I'm not a, really an engineer of any sort. I'm a I'm a shed engineer, <laughs> and and I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. I just like uh, you know playing Legos kind of with uh, motorcycle parts and car stuff and seeing what fits together in different configurations and just trying something new and different. Anyway, uh, I guess that's all that I have for this episode. Um, I'm going to start, maybe I'll uh, shoot like a, a time lapse of me uh, starting to put stuff together, but yeah, I'm going to start reassembling stuff now that I have the triple clamps that I want and uh, and all this stuff so uh, I'll try to give you like a, a process video as I do that. And I also found a a place local to me that uh, does Linex and so I'm going to call them tomorrow morning, this is Sunday, and so I'm going to call them tomorrow and ask them uh, what they charge to cover this bad boy in Linex. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I hope I didn't talk your ear off too much. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.